talk about your casting process. How did you discover Million Dollar Island? Did you know what it was about? Um, well, I was literally, I would just moved to Melbourne, um, and I was sitting on the toilet on Instagram as you do, you know, I was just scrolling through stories and I was just like that, 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 that. And then I seen million, a million dollars is what I seen. I didn't see any Island or anything. I just, a million dollars. And I was like, Oh, okay. And then I, but then I was just like, no, whatever. And I kept going. And then, and then I seen it again. And then I was like, oh, whatever. And so I clicked on it. I got up and I just sent the little video. They just had these questions you answered and you just did a little video. And then um, I just sent through this, I just sent through the video and it was, you know, forgot about it. Deleted the video, um, completely forgot about it. Two months later, I'm on the toilet again and I'm getting a call from a random number. And in my head, I'm just like, ah, I'm not going to pick it up. And I was like, yeah. And so, you know, I finish up very quick and I get up and I answer this call and they're like, Hello, yeah, we're calling from Million Dollar Island. Um, we're gonna need you in. We sent an email in regards to an interview tomorrow, and I'm on the. I'm like, I was like, well, what Million Dollar Who? What's going on? And then she was like, Yeah, yeah, you actually sent through a submission. We really liked you. We'd like to, yeah, further your application process. And then I went down. I almost missed it. I was this close to missing out because they sent me an email which was saying we want you to be at an interview tomorrow. And I, if I wasn't at the interview, who knows what would have happened. But I went to that interview and there were probably like, like 30, 40 people. And they split us into two groups and they took one group into a room and they like played the games, like a Jenga game. And then they like just got us to talk about ourselves. And it was funny because everybody in that room could have been on that island. Like they were all just like the people on the island. Going into Million Dollar Island, there was obviously like a Dutch version, but I don't know if you knew that before going in. Yeah. But did you know like what to expect or like what was like, how did that change like when you got to the island? So like, what did you expect beforehand? And then how did those expectations like differ? Um, I definitely, I expected it to be, I don't know, more fake, you know, just because it's reality TV. Um, I expected it to be, I mean, there's some things we probably can't go over really just because of contracts and whatnot, but like there were a lot of surprises, um, in regards to like production and stuff. And that really took me aback, but it was real, like, it was real weird, super weird. And you were, it was, I was so much hungrier than I ever expected. Like you didn't think it was going to be. Like they had the people that were in charge of like cameras and stuff said this is the worst one they've watched because as far as for food, like it's worse than Survivor. Oh god, like it's worse. It's worse than Survivor because our camp literally was surviving off like a handful of not even a handful. When I say a handful, I just mean like the palm of your hand of pasta a day, or like a quarter of an a, a, an apple, or not an apple, sorry, quarter of a tomato. No, no, it, it's just we, we just were not eating much starving yeah so how bad was it maybe like compared to like you and like rock camp in the beginning because the entire like first four episodes rock camp was like we have plenty of food we're we're on top and you're like we're starving we have no food like call like we're uh, miserable here's a little bit of behind the scenes now <laughs> harry who i don't know if you've seen yet one of my mates on the show um him and i so you know when we beat rock have you seen have you seen all yeah, the episodes? I've seen all of them. You know when we had the rock the camp versus camp, right? And we beat rock camp. So they all had to go out and do a survival challenge. Now, while they were out, you know, foraging for food, Harry and I thought, hmm, who's at the camp? No one. So we kind of dipped over there ran to that camp and I just took like a bunch of stuff and just stole from them. <laughs> because we were there, you know, we're starving to death and you know, this isn't, you know, it's a game. We can do it. And then we get back to our camp and Carla freaks out at us. Like, why did you do that? You can't do that. And, and like, here's us like 19 and 20, like, you know, 
getting yelled at by this by her and like no one's actually like standing up for us so we're just kind of like far out and we go and we just take like we take it we go to take it back and i'm just like nah forget this and i just pocket all this pasta and pour all this pasta into a container and then i take that container and put it in my own thing like i was like this is like this is unreasonable and guess what happens the very next or not the very next day at the end of that day rock camp was a free-for-all and everyone was allowed to go and so ev- everybody was so upset like carla felt so like like sh- why didn't we get it the first time and it's just like that was a, a massive um frustration because we went and stole it got it and then carl blew up at us so we took it back but then everybody stole from the camp anyways. So that was a big muck around. Yeah, so since there's so many people on the island, like who did you bond with immediately that we need to see on camera? Because obviously with like 100 people, they don't really get to like focus on everybody. And like even through like episode six, you're like, who is this person? Yeah, I think that's the problem. They've got 100 people and they, they don't, like they can't really focus on every relationship. But I probably, what they didn't, show and what you guys don't know um is or you probably you might know this but we were all in the hotels together right so you've got these massive resorts with all these people in it and you had one you like a roommate in that hotel and my roommate was mike from the first episode yeah so mike and i were like very very good um good mates like we were just working out all day in the in the uh, hotel room it was so boring we couldn't go out we had to stay in there and like there were people on your, like, you. Could, there was a balcony, and then you could go out, and, like, there were all the people that were obviously on the show, and so we were just talking beforehand. So all the camps, which is kind of a bit funny, all the camps were actually formed kind of before the, everybody got on the island because people were, or whose floor you were on, you know what I mean, who you were already talking to. Um, And so the camps had already formed, and then we like Mike and I were really close and then we got onto the Island and then he got out in the first challenge. So they probably didn't show how much, like how big of a deal that was. And then Harry obviously was um like definitely my best mate on the show. Yeah. I find it funny that they let you talk and do all that stuff before pregame because on most of these shows, like you don't even know like who's there and you're not allowed to talk or you'll get kicked off. So I find that like really fascinating that they just like didn't really. Oh, well they, in that sense. They did. No, no, no. But you've got to take this in mind. With other TV shows, you haven't got a hundred people. Like, they just did not expect regulating 100 people that, like, they've literally cast to be social butterflies and, like, out there and, like, these cool personalities to not interact. Like, they didn't realize how hard that would be. And so the, everybody was trying to be like, you can't talk. You can't talk to each other. Like, that's what everybody said, and we were like, "And but what are they going to do? Get rid of the entire cast because the entire cast was talking to each other? Like, it, it kind of was, I reckon the next time they do it, it'll be completely different. Yeah, hopefully there is a next time. If there is, yeah. I don't know how well the show actually is doing. I just did it as a, I just did it because I knew it would be fun, and the other was, so. So, like, why did you choose Log over all, all the other camps? Well, like, like I was saying, Log camp was literally almost everyone I knew already. So, like, those people I already knew. Like, you would even go into groups and you would eat food. So, you would go down. I could have ended up either in Log or Rock, really. Those are the two camps I could have ended up in because we were on opposite sides. So, there was the big hallway in the hotel and there was this side and then this side. And then when we had to go to breakfast in the morning, we'd all come together and go out and eat breakfast in the thing that was group one and you had four groups and it was like i knew you know i knew a lot of rock camp and i knew all of log camp before we got on the island you know what i mean yeah so then there was a decent amount of tension like in your camp between carla and adrian i think his name was so where were you on the front of that? And like, how did that maybe affect your camp? Like, obviously they had nominated and was there maybe like any other rivalries that we didn't get to see like throughout your camp or maybe on the island itself? I mean, definitely AJ and Carla were the two biggest, um, you know, they, they both 
kind of had a thing about like taking charge and being the leader. And so, I mean, Carla was a, it was a lot better than um, AJ, but AJ was, you know, he, and he's had, he's had a, he's like, just not to throw him under the bus. Like I know he's got a pretty good story as well, like his um, upbringing and all the stuff that he's been through. But like the way he was kind of like treating people in, in camp was just, he was acting like he's, you know, big survival God, you know, big survival God AJ coming out here, you know, t- telling everybody what to do. And Harry and I, were the ones that, you know, we sat there for like 30 minutes. Uh, Harry, I, there was actually, there was more people like Parker and that, but at the very end of it, Harry and I were the ones who actually started the fire by using the two bits of bamboo. So we were the ones that did it. And then AJ was like, we're not giving the fire to anyone. We're not, we're not going to, we're discussing it. Fire, fire is king on the island. And we were just like, bro, are you serious? And then he tried to like, he was bossing everyone around one time, like saying, oh, you need to build this raft and we're going to cut this freaking huge log and like we there was like four of us he's like we're gonna take turns around the log and we're gonna start cutting it and blah 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 and i was like bro this is so stupid because the log if this is a boring story tell me but the log was up right and so if you were to start cutting it it's it's so heavy that it's gonna bend in and trap the saw and i was like look man we're not doing this and then he was like come on come on and so i just cut it all by myself and he was like come on switch over and i didn't i just kept going looking at him and then it happened and the saw went and got caught. And then I said, here you go, have a go at it now. And he literally couldn't do it. And he stormed off and he was like, all right, build your own raft then, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, we'll do, mate. And it was just, uh, yeah. And then the other one was like Carla definitely, you know, got on my nerves max degree a few times. Not in a, not, and I say that because you got to understand that everyone was like so high strung, like, you're and starving you're on an island, barely. Yeah. Yeah, you're starving. You're barely eating. Um, and so when that stuff happened with the food and, like, Harry and I went and got food for our camp and then we were, like, you know, shouted at by her and she's and, – and then, like, she said she was appointed leader, but she never was. Like, no one was like, you are the leader of this camp. Like, it was kind of I, – I didn't appreciate, like, the people kind of – taking charge for things and being like you know that type of i just didn't appreciate that and also like it's just it's just unreasonable no one appointed you leader and you're yelling at people for you know getting food for the camp when you know at the end of that day everyone was allowed to go get food so it was kind of yeah and and and, but like i i love everyone from that camp everyone was cool and like obviously after i know hard feelings but like during during i definitely had those feelings was there anyone that you were like shocked that like didn't give you like a bracelet or anything? Because like when we see that when people get bracelets, we just don't know like what their relationship is. And I wish there were like more like secret scenes so you could see those forming. So was there anyone that you were like yeah. kind of shocked that you didn't get a bracelet like before you ultimately like decided to volunteer for a challenge? Oh, there were some people from Rock Camp that I thought might give me their bracelet. But then I like they the decision they ended up like what they ended up doing made sense as well. Like at the end of the day, to me, an extra bracelet didn't really matter. I thought there were a few people that I had like I was good mates with on the and that might give me their bracelet. But they ended up giving it to someone that had more of a like a story or something. It wasn't as much just because, you know, you're mates. And I think they were giving it to someone that they're like they wanted to, you know, win it. So like yeah, yeah. But like I didn't like there was no like oh I really thought I was just like oh they might give it to me you know I didn't like there was no one that I was like yeah this there's a hundred percent he's gonna give it to me or she's gonna give it to me so I heard on a podcast that Harry did that you were doing like backflips and showing off your athleticism before like you got nominated and stuff and doing like unnecessary things to maybe make yourself a target so like um well, I wasn't doing that much because I was so tired and there's no energy, but I did do a few. But, like, no one really no one really no- was going to nominate me because of that. Like, they, qu- you quickly realized that the fittest, most athletic person wasn't winning the challenges. It didn't have to do with that. Like, you saw how many times Brett failed to get the bag at that first one, and then he still ended up winning the challenge. Like, I think it was quickly established that athleticism wasn't really going to help you too much. Um, and then, 
and then yeah, I've I don't know, I just did a few did a few things here and there. I jumped up and down. That's what I did, man. But no, I don't think that um I don't think that contributed because I, I was the one who nominated myself for the challenge, so yeah, so be- before you nominate yourself, take me through like the feast and like you're eating, you're enjoying oh. yourself. And then you have to do a camp first camp challenge, and then you're like, shit, I might be going home. So take me I, through the entire thing. I have never in my life. Let me say this again. I've never in my life been as happy to see food as I was on that day. And it, now, I'm not just saying this because I was hungry. Because post-Island, I went to the bakery where they made those pies. And those are the best pies. Shout out Baker Girls in Langkawi. If you are ever in Langkawi, you f- you find Baker Girls and you go there. Because, yes, they are the best pie. And I'm from New Zealand, so I know what a good pie is. They were the best pies I've ever had in my life. But yeah, enough on that. Yeah, the food was just oh mind blowing. Just got on there and I was stuffing my face. And everyone was like, "It's gonna be a trap. It's gonna be a trap. Don't eat too much food. You're gonna feel sick." And I was like, "Yeah, whatever." And I just absolutely smashed myself. And then thank you, um, absolutely smashed myself. Food, um, and and then I like felt completely fine. And then we had a camp challenge and like, no, I was so ready to go. You don't understand. The worst part of the whole show was the boredom. Like they don't show you how much downtime there was. There was so much time where you were just sitting doing nothing. So when we were like in a camp versus camp, I wasn't even upset. I wasn't scared or anything. I was excited, you know? So, so yeah, fun. So, you know, RP rock. Going into that, like, how did you feel? Because, like, the swimming portion, like, you guys were really far behind, but then you had, like, the Rubik's Cube puzzle, and I saw, like, during, um, like, when you got nominated, it showed you that you were, like, doing a Rubik's Cube, so I think you might have known how to do them. But how did you feel, like, when you are actually, like, doing it? Like, did the nerves kick in? Like, were you, like, stressed out? And, like, what was it, like, actually, like, winning after doing a puzzle for, like, two hours, it seemed like? Oh, well, it hit well. Firstly, let me just, it, it wasn't actually as exciting as I thought it would be. And this is what I mean, the, the, the athletic side of thing, the swimming across and grabbing the big, you know, battering ram, literally had no real bearing because we sat there for, th- well, I think it was three hours and the, the ra- it rained, it was, you know, didn't rain. Like it, it went for so long. We were sitting out there trying to figure out this and it wasn't, the, the guy Dylan who was on there first was like a Rubik's Cube master. So I don't think it was it wasn't like a Rubik's cube. There was some other pattern to it, um, but yeah, I, I mean, winning that after that, it, I was just relieved that it was done. Really, I was just like, "Fire up! Thank you. Let's let's be done." You know. Yeah. So after that, you're on a high, and then um, Rockham gets completely annihilated, and you decide to nominate yourself because Log has the power because Corey has the most money. Why did you decide to do that at that point? Was there maybe like any animosity like towards Brett or were you just wanting to like take him out? Um, Like there was animosity towards Brett, not in like a serious way and kind of like, you know, I wanted like a kind of a TV show kind of funny way because he took Mike out and Mike was my friend and I was like, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming to, you know, avenge Mike. I'm going to, I'm going to get in there and, you know, just take out Brett, you know, this big, this big guy, this big, you know, he thinks he's king of the rock. And, you know, it's time for him to, you know, be knocked off. So I was, you know, just, I didn't really, like, Brett Brett was a really good guy. He's a cool guy. People won't see that, really, because he always kind of put on, like, a little bit of a thing for the show, which is cool, because they've gotten a lot of cool stuff about it. But that added, like, at his heart, he's a, he's a good guy, because on the, on one of the drives over, because the island where they shot, where we stayed, and the island where the wheel spin is, was actually two different islands. So yeah. you actually get driven over there on a boat and we we like sat beside each other one time we had a good chat so Brett was cool but I, I nominated myself for a couple reasons one one reason was I was extremely bored you know I was like what am I doing what am I doing here just gonna, am I going to sit back and do nothing and I noticed that this was a good time I could become the richest man on the island with Corey and together we'd have a combined total of like like 390k 
which could have seen us through to the end. Um, and I thought to myself, I'm either going to make a play now, and it was a challenge that when it was explained, I thought I could win. I thought it would be body weight and we'd be hanging like over the water. That's what I thought it would be. I didn't think you'd be holding on to like a weight. Um, and I just thought, why not? Let's just go for it. I feel like I can win. Brett's vulnerable right now. And if I don't get him, someone else is going to become the new richest. And it's just like, you know, that's, yeah, so, that's what I was. Yeah, so can you talk about the strategy? Because you said like in your confessional, you're like, I don't understand why these people are like not gunning for Brett and Parker first because then they'll have like a three oh. one advantage. Because I was watching that, I'm like, these people are just dumb. I'm like, they were, they were just... Brock, Sarah, Doc. Come on, guys, get your head in the game, guys. What what were you thinking? This is this is what's stupid. Let me explain this. You have obviously what matters most up there was how many people are on your team, right? Because that's how many weights you can load. So. Vine Camp had three people. Then Top Camp had two people, and I had one person. So to put this in logical terms, Vine Camp had 30 kgs to allocate, Rock Camp had 20 kgs, and I had 10. So the smartest possible thing to do would have been take out Brett, take out me, take out Parker. But instead, they decided to do the stupidest stuff I've ever witnessed, and you know, just be, just be, you know, be idiots. It was, it was, uh, it was mind-boggling how they didn't seem to share a single brain cell between the three of them formulating that. Like, I don't even know if you can call it a plan. Like, what was that? And then they went for Parker instead of Brett when it was obviously like the bigger the guy, the more likely he's going to be able to hold this up. But I don't know. That, that that that's on them. They can do what they want. They didn't win, so it doesn't matter. So do you think that they were closer to Brett or like is it just like a dumb judgment lapse on their part? Judgment lapse on their part. That's what it was. So then why did you end up going for Sarah? Because that didn't really make sense watching it, because no offense, she was never gonna win that. So I don't understand like why you went different. for her. But neither was I. And I thought at the end of the day, it wasn't like it was a tip for tap thing. And Sarah was the last person on the line. She was the one person I said, Sarah, come on. Like, you could put it on anybody else. I've already got 40 kgs on me. Put it on anybody else. And she still decided to put it on me. And I was like, you know what? The only person 10 kgs is going to make a difference to is Sarah because I'm falling soon. So I might as well put it on her. And, and, and I just knew, I just didn't care. Like, it was like, I'm not winning. So I don't really, like, you know, I wasn't actually too fussed on who won because I knew I wasn't, so it didn't really matter to me anymore. Who cares if it's still Brett? Because someone's getting all those bands. You know what I mean? Yeah, so was there any, like, how are you feeling, like, after you hit the water, you know you only have one chance to win, um, like, a survival challenge, or otherwise you're probably going home. So what's your mindset for maybe like the day? And then how are you feeling going into the Survivor Challenge? I'm going to be honest. I had a pretty negative mindset. Like I went into it with a negative mindset, which was kind of, I like I said in one of the things, I felt like I did myself a disservice because I, I went into it just being like, uh, like kind of felt defeated. I was like far out. I've, you know, I put myself out there and now I'm going to have to continue on with just one bracelet and it's just back to like being boring. And I was just like, I did feel kind of like I went into it with a bad mindset. And so when I went into the survival challenge, I kind of was just like, whatever. Like, especially when I saw what it was with the eating, because I'm so bad at that stuff. And I just thought, oh, I guess I'm going home. Going into the survival challenge, how bad was that balloon? Because that's mainly the thing that cost you because you did make up a lot of time in the other two, like sea cucumbers, and I think it was like larvae or something was the second one. So then how bad was that balloon? It looked so much worse than it was, and it was it was really a mind over matter thing. The only thing that made me spit it up the first time was Parker, you know, gagging. Like I just looked at the tree line and forgot about it and just was eating. And here's, do you want to know why I lost that? There's one reason why I lost that challenge. And it's because I wasn't listening to the instructions properly. And you only needed 
one sea cucumber or brunook, whatever they call them. You only needed one, but you needed to eat two eggs, two sago worms. And so in my head, when I got into the water, I found a sea cucumber instantly. So I had way before they did. And then I was looking for my second one, assuming they were two. And by the time I got my second one, Doc was already out of the water. But I had my first one, like, you know, a minute before he, he went out of the water. So the only reason I lost that challenge was because I just misheard the rules. And I was yelling out. I was like, how many do you need? One or two? One or two? And no one was answering me. Production didn't answer me, no. And that's the only reason I lost that challenge. And it was, it's, it's oh, yeah, whatever. Really annoyed me. So does like, that kind of haunt you? I definitely does, but you know I'm over it now. I didn't really. It is what it is, you know. So once you get back to camp, you have to get a bracelet by somebody, or otherwise you're screwed. So Kara and Sue are considering quitting. Was there anybody else that you think you could have got a bracelet from other than those two? That was kind of like waffling. And what did you think like your chances were like going into the elimination? Well, I went in, I just thought the way, like, if you watch it, I think Kara was quite rude. You know, when I went up, I was like, hey, trying to chat to her, and she was just really, like, shut me down. Like, And, like, the logic behind giving it to a person that's already got a bracelet doesn't really make much sense at all. Like, what it means to someone leaving the island versus what it means to someone, you know, that's been on the island it, it is completely, it's a world apart. And we were also like on the same side of the um, hotel when we also, you know, were in the same camp. So I, I did kind of, you know, I thought it was kind of dog that she wouldn't, you know, save me. I just thought like Sue was a bit different. I really got along with Sue and I think she had quite a good reason for wanting to give it to the other guy. But even so, even that, it's just like what it means to someone who's already on the island versus what it means to someone who's leaving is a world apart. And it, it was for someone that's meant to be a family and like, oh, this camp was my family, blah, blah, blah. It's like, shut up. If it was your family, you'd, you'd give it to somebody that, you know, was leaving. But So what was that like maybe being around some of the people that quit and didn't give you a bracelet? And how was that? Um, I mean, it was fine. I was obviously, you know, I was just like, I'm going to call you a dog on the interviews, just so you know. But then that's what I said to them. And then other than that, it was fine. We just, you know, got on with it. Sue kind of stayed in the hotel and then Kara was out and stuff. We were like, we all went out. There was like a few of us went out to eat and stuff. It didn't matter. Like, I wasn't, like, it's a, it's a TV show at the end of the day. It's a game, you know. Yeah, so somebody wanted me to ask, were there any love connections out on the island with 100 people? Oh, there were a few. There were a few. There were some people, you know, that I think had a little, little bit of a connection. But the main, the thing was, is people were so like you're so, you're starved. You've got no energy. Like, you just can't be. You can't be really be asked to do any of that. You know. Do you have any like fun behind the scenes stories, maybe pregame or after the island, or maybe during on your show that you think? was like funny or cool or anything um hmm oh yeah well there's one because we were strictly told that if we were to leave our hotel room we'd be strict kicked off the show and one time i put like a hoodie on long pants like glasses and like a face mask and just snuck out and went and swum in the um, infinity pool they had and i swam in there for like an hour and a bit and so that was fun. I thought that was funny because I was just you know, there for five days, just bored out of your mind. Like a hotel was hard too. sitting there doing nothing all day. Like, you're not allowed to do anything. It's just so boring. Got sick of it. See, that's that's the toughest part. I, I couldn't even imagine is like the boredom and like hearing everybody's life story like again and again and again. You just get sick of it. Well, people were just like, I mean, that's what that's what. Like it wasn't really anything else but being bored to death. Like you're just so much downtime, man. Like even on the island, like you know they didn't film that they, they didn't film Saturdays. Like they they were they're actually two days behind on the episodes because they didn't film Saturdays. The camera crew took a day off, and they just didn't film those days. So we just did nothing. 
Did anybody try to sneak into like production and steal food or something? Nah, people were there, like, because they had medical teams and stuff, but like, they just weren't filming. Like, it was like, yeah. And we were just on the beach doing nothing all day long. It was so boring. Say is the, there were a lot of people that really annoyed me because of their, they were just so obsessed with the cameras. Like, I got, when I, from day one, I was mic'd up every day. And there were only about 25 people every day that were mic'd up. And I was always mic'd up. And the cameras did always seem to follow me. I don't know why, but I didn't want them to. I would sometimes just sit there and say things like Nike, Louis Vuitton, Prada, Colgate, just so they couldn't like use it because it, you can't put the brands in there. And then there were people that were like, there were other people that were every time they're like, wait, 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 go get the cameras. Tell the cameras to come. And they're like always wanted to be in front of the camera. And it was just so embarrassing for them, to be honest. Like, I just thought it was so, you know, cringe. Like, why are you always trying to be in front of the cameras, bro? Like, just, it's, yeah, I don't know. It just seems weird. If you got it, you got it. And if you don't, that's why, well, that's why they're calling for the cameras, I guess. Yeah, I know. Like, they just did any little thing they could to get their bit of airtime. And it was just like, ah, oh, that's all they cared about. They were like, so somebody literally said this to me. I was like, why do you, I was like, why do you guys care about the cameras so much? And they're like, easy for you, you to say because, because you've got so much airtime, we all the rest of us don't. Like I was like, bro, literally you and a few others are the only people who care about that. That like, most people were not here to get air airtime. You know, it's like, come on now, you are a grown adult. You needed to grow up. <laughs> That's what I thought at least. Yeah, well, I really enjoyed this, and I'll definitely let you know when it's out. I'll probably be out in the next couple hours or so. Sounds good, mate.